Welcome, welcome. Uh, it looks like our Leon Valley adventures have made it to the Corbett Report. Um, I'm pretty stoked about that. It's probably my favorite YouTube channel of all time. And uh, gosh, I just thought I'd make a little commentary about it. Here we go. Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Beat the Southern Poverty Law Center. We got that story plus the Ministry of Truth being set up in California. But first, police chief calls press conference and arrests everybody who shows up. Over the weekend, the police chief for the Leon Valley Police Department in Texas called a late afternoon press conference to talk about all these police accountability activists that have been live streaming their friendly neighborhood officers. However, as soon as the conference began, Chief Joseph Salvaggio began arresting people and then detained the entire crowd. Now, the backstory to this, the setup, over the past two months, Salvaggio has been the subject of multiple videos and independent media articles for his alleged corruption. According to the group National Association for Individual Rights, controversy began the day after May Day, May 2nd, when Jesus Padilla was arrested while filming outside Leon Valley City Hall. Now, if that was May 2nd, gosh, we made it in there like the middle of June. So, uh, the there were incidences before this one mentioned in the story here where the we burned the cop flag um other things have been going on but uh i'll just let it play here it continued into last week oh there's the beautiful cop flag this is lieutenant anderson the most vicious brutal psychopathic violence prone cop they had and since this incident when we all started complaining about him collectively because he was treating us all the same way i never really saw him again i think he got pulled off to another department or a desk or something but they were like yeah this guy's a hot trigger we don't want everybody complaining about him being all uh, brutal and threatening, um, he walked up on me, tried to square up for a fight with me three times after this incident, and that's called assault. And I just kind of laughed at him and walked away and turned around while laughing to show what a meaningless threat he posed to me. So he just look at him. He's lucky he's got a badge and a gun and a taser because ain't no way he's going to ever pull that with me alone on the street. Let's just leave it at that. He gives me a push here with his right arm and says, get out now. I don't remember if he said or you'll be arrested, but it was get out at a minimum. I move for the door as I'm almost out. This guy here, a corporal, corporal, I forget his name, it doesn't matter, um, grabs me, pulls me back in, that's where they steal all my stuff. So that's just a little story behind this clip. And as the Free Thought Project reported, where we get this article from, multiple people were arrested for their freedom of speech last week as they desecrated a thin blue line American. That right there is Pat. She's just an order follower with not enough marbles in her head for any open mind about anything other than, oh, this is my chief and my department, and you're wrong no matter what. Even though I can't verbally defend what am I at, what I'm doing, she's pretty hilarious. And flag, which seemed to be coming quite popular. As the conference began, Salvaggio announced the immediate arrest of one of the activists. First and foremost, said Salvaggio as he walked out of City Hall and approached... This guy right here was a plant. He just showed up that day and uh, kind of looks like a cop. We kind of knew there were people in the group hanging out that weren't of us. You could tell because they were always alone. Like they weren't talking to members of the group. They weren't interested. They weren't trying to be friendly. They were just observing and trying to sit, stand around. We saw him down in the, you know, when they arrested us and took us to the room. He was, he didn't have any cuffs on and he was uh, over in the side part of the room where other cops were just chilling in a chair. So <laughs> we called him out too. It was pretty funny. It's the crowd that gathered bow. Come over here. You're under arrest. After arresting Bao Nguyen, Salvaggio began to address the rest of the media, many of whom were legit credentialed reporters. I totally, totally support your right to put something online, your First Amendment right, said Salvaggio before completely negating that statement. Everybody else, you are not free to leave. You are witnesses. Every one of y'all, witnesses to a crime. Every one of your cameras, your devices, every one of them, they're going to be taken. Every one of y'all, sit down right here. Salvaggio then ordered his officers to arrest every single other person in attendance, including those who... That was Bao over there getting arrested. I was just about to come around this corner. And the cop also said that we would be held legally responsible for the comments during our live stream. I mean, you can watch this, um, you know, full video by just typing in Leon Valley Press Conference. There's so many camera angles. Just pick which one you want. Tried to walk away. During the press conference, Salvaggio said the arrests were due to comments left on these live streamers' YouTube channels. To be more specific and accurate, the the chief used, the quote-unquote chief, 
said that his home address was posted by a random YouTube commenter during the live stream. And he blamed not only the owner of the channel, but the moderators they had picked for not deleting it and for also deleting pro-cop comments. As a moderator in most all these channels, there are no pro-cop comments, okay? There, there's a couple, there are cops that get on there, but they don't, they, they just insult us. Nobody from the community is actually going, oh, why are you guys picking on these cops? Oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, you're cop baiting. Oh, you're harassing. We don't ever get comments like that. They're either our comments, supportive comments, or insults by people you just really think are cops. They're obviously on our channels trying to, you know, cause disruption, and they actually do cause fake news. Gosh, they'll even make um, accounts that are identical to the names of well-known supporters, and then fake like they're those supporters in the comments. <laughs> I had one guy do that to me, and I thought he was uh, somebody I wanted to mod anyway, so I modded him, and he just started um, hiding everybody. He probably hid about 12 to 15 people before I was able to unmod him. And then my mods went through and uh, unhid everybody that he had hid. So, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what's going on online. It's about the chief's address. They have all of our addresses. Boy, they know where we sleep at night so they can come get us, you know, SWAT style anytime they want to. But gosh, the chief's address is public information. You can find it after a 10-minute Google search. And for him to be like, oh, because my home address was on your... YouTube live stream. Not only are you going to face a class three felony, James Freeman and Bow, which was what they're facing right now in Leon Valley, but seven, five more of you will just be arrested. I did 16 hours in a San Antonio jail. You can hear the story about that on my channel. Um, all the charges were dropped for me and two others. Uh, a couple of others were released before being even taken to jail. So it's one of those things where they're like, oh, you can, uh, you know, you can escape the rap, but not the ride. And that's, just plain out what they're doing over a, a chief's address. I'm not even joking. You sound, you think that's a joke. They've charged him with not a misdemeanor, a class three felony for a, a total stranger out there in, anywhere in the world posting the chief's home address. He's never had a threat made toward him. They're not even alleging that. He's never had a, an, an odd visitor at his house. He's never had threatening phone calls or anything like that. All it takes is a stranger on your channel can make a comment and you catch a felony. And right now, Clash with Bao is being held in solitary confinement <clears throat> on a very similar harassment charge against a lawyer who, for six hours, once one day a week, pretends to be a municipal court judge and run extortion scheme scams mainly on teenagers who are almost always accompanied by their parent or guardian. Yeah, Bao's in solitary confinement right now. If you want to help him out, go to his channel, Clash with Bao. And uh, we do some fundraisers, and we've already got about half the the fees we need to get a bar member on this because uh, the corrupt, the insane asylum of corruption of the Fort Worth and Tarrant County justice system is, uh, well, I'm not going to go into it right here. You can get on his channel and figure out what's going on. I'll just continue with the video. That threaten police officers as to imply it's their fault people make threats on their channels. Interestingly enough, James, just an hour or so ago, Rika, the hopeful volunteerist. Rika, shout out to Rika, what up? Posted the link in the Media Monarchy chat to Bao Nguyen's live stream. His channel, I guess, is called Clash with Bao. And I Rika is the uh, queen of my mods, so please don't ask me to make you a mod on my channel. You've got to go through Rika. That's it. I believe she knows him. They're all over there in Texas. And there was some pretty hefty live stream action going on as I just watched it a little bit ago. So we'll include that in the show notes and the links. But I think if we kind of tie this into the rage purge culture that we've been talking about, James, I keep thinking about that story from a couple of weeks ago about all the Congress critters needing this protection. And we now see kind of breaking out on the streets of America what they're calling the loss of civility, all these public confrontations and shamings. It's getting kind of heated as summer starts to heat up. Yeah, shame is part of it, but that's the lesser half of it. Primarily, we use mockery and comedy because government types, government agents, they know exactly how to deal with anger and frustration. That plays right into their hand. They use fear for political gain. That's called terrorism. And uh, fear is kind of the seed of anger. So 
if you've got the success and the confidence and the knowledge to see past all of that, not be afraid, know how to handle these people verbally, you get to a place where you're laughing at them. And uh, that's what they really hate. They really hate that we're generating, you know, entertaining content that points out just how violent government is and pulling back the curtain, exposing the illusion that there is no protection and service, there is no state, there are no citizens, there is no duty to protect. It's just a bunch of uh, gangbangers with badges and guns put in place by other gangbangers higher up, and uh, I think they kind of uh, hit the nail on the head summarizing this whole situation. James, what do you see? Well, I see essentially the, uh, the I think the power-mad, narcissistic uh, psychopaths at the very top like to have power-mad, narcissistic psychopaths underneath them to be the enforcer class. But they don't like it when the, those people get out of line in a way that brings draws attention to the process. So I do not believe that these arrests are going to stand. Uh, I mean, obviously, there is no law about <laughs> someone said something on a YouTube chat stream, therefore I'm arresting you. It, it makes absolutely no sense. This will not stand in court. Of course, there's always ways they can apply some silly law in some way that doesn't that's completely out of context to you know put you in jail if they really want to unless uh there's enough ire and public reaction that uh, that becomes unviable and i think that would be the case uh here so i'm not expecting that this will proceed um uh very far in terms of actually arrest of uh, keeping these people in jail but having said that, I mean, this brings up a number of issues, including, of course, the contentious relationship between the police and the press. And what does the press even mean? The credentialed reporters. That means technically, legally, nothing. Uh, there's no difference between you and a credentialed reporter in the eyes of the law uh, for the purposes of the First Amendment, nor should there be. We do not want the government deciding who is and, is and is not a legitimate reporter because we know what direction that will go in. More and more on that in a minute. But, uh, yes, uh, for people who are interested in this whole topic of, well, when is it okay to film the police or to film these types of things and what can we do? I would suggest going way back in the Corbett Report archives to an interview that I did six years ago now with Carlos Miller of Photography Is Not a Crime, talking about his travels and travails in, I believe, in Florida, where he uh, had many run-ins with the police trying to tell him that he could not film this or that when he clearly could, and he challenged and won in court numerous times uh, for the crime of trying to photograph the police. Um, it is not a crime in most jurisdictions, in most senses, So, uh, but like anything else, if they, uh, if you don't fight back against this kind of nonsense, they'll just continue pushing. Um, they'll take as much as they can out of uh, public liberties because, hey, no one's pushing back against it. So it is, uh, it is important that we keep the pressure up on this. And as I say, I don't think these uh, current arrests are going to stand. I don't think once it sees a day in court, I don't think this is going to go any further. Yeah, every charge got dismissed except the two class three felonies against James Freeman and Clash with Bow for the chief's address being posted on their YouTube. I was hit with obstruction, interference, and failure to ID because I, 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 what's your name? You already have my name. What, what kind of sense does it make for me to tell you information that you already have? You're acting irrationally, illogically. Are you feeling well okay? Have you had any drugs or alcohol in the last 48 hours? Like you're not making any sense. We both know you have information. You're asking me for the same information. That doesn't make any sense at all. I would just keep doing that and laughing at him. So I never technically had to ID. Um, the only charge that made it to the magistrate was the interference, and he dropped it for lack of probable cause. So, uh, you know, we're obviously in touch with lawyers big time, big time. That's all I've been doing this week. Uh, we've got one lined up for uh, Bow to get him out of jail and get his bond conditions removed. If you want any information about that, look at his recent live streams on the channel Clash with Bow. And obviously... Uh, just all kinds of lawyers are just chomping at the bit to get a hold of this case. They're all offering it pro bono, right? I mean, that's how open and shut this is. So, uh, so gosh, stay sub for details, right? That's it. That's all I got. Hope you have a nice day. Hope you enjoyed. I'll be making a few more videos today. Be safe.